Hey everyone, this is Pick again. So this time I'm going to be talking about stuff in the Hornet that maybe somebody who has um, already flown the Hornet, somebody who's gotten used to the Hornet even, um, something that they should know um, and might not know because of perhaps tutorials just never talking about it. Um, this is something I have not heard many people talk about outside of just public discords and people sharing their tips. So hopefully this uh, this helps some people out. So I'm first going to go into... well first I'm going to turn this down. Uh, I'm first going to go into air to air. I'm going to select the AMRAM. I'm going into TWS mode because I find it absolutely superior. And then I'm going to go select this data page. Now, this page, um, the m very most important thing is this top right number. This is the target age out time. Um, and I believe it's how many radar sweeps uh, until the brick. So let's see this little radar hit here. It's the little rectangle inside of this hafu here. Um, it is essentially how long it's going to take for that uh, brick to time out. And from what I hear, it is incorrectly uh, implemented in DCS, and so it also affects how long it takes for these hafus to disappear. A hafu is basically the icon uh, for a track file. So selecting a higher number on the AMRAM, um, this is going to let your tracks stay around for longer. Um, and hopefully this doesn't stay like this forever. Um, I've been told by a few people that this is just not correct. Uh, though I have no way of confirming that. But anyway, if I select the AIM-9 now, it goes back to 8. AIM-7, it's also 8. If I select the AIM-120 again though, it's going to go back to 4. So this is just one of those really annoying things where remember to do it. Um, remember to set it back to 32, um, or at least 16. Because now, as you can see, these bricks are sticking around for much longer. Um, and this track file is going to stick, stay around for a lot longer. So even if you lose a track, um, I've seen it many times actually just reacquire. And so you totally lose radar lock, but then the um, target stops notching, say, or something along those lines, and your track is going to come back, uh, and there won't be any issues. So that is a big thing uh, that I see a lot, um, and just applying this trick will help you um, for sure. So what I will do now is I'm going to talk about something else. So another big complaint I see uh, is the Hornet Hotas. Now the Hornet Hotas, um, I'm going to just go out on a limb and I'm going to say it is not quite as good as the F-16 Hotas. The F-16 Hotas, everything is quite at your fingertips. Uh, there are dedicated buttons for switching what is on your screen. Um, overall, I think it's a little bit more intelligent uh, in the way it's laid out. That said, the F-18 HOTAS is pretty good in and of itself. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to be in just a, a normal nav mode. If I go into air-to-air -air mode, okay, first I'm going to switch my weapon. Second, if I press sensor control switch left, okay, this right here is not a screen we can interact with. Neither would, say, the HUD. As long as you have a screen on the left that is not interactable, so not something we can assign this diamond to, the uh, TDC priority. If I press sensor control switch left, it's going to give me the ASL page immediately. Now, if you've never used the ASL page, essentially this yellow rectangle uh, shows where my radar is pointing. So I have a very wide scan pointing forward. If I make this a narrower scan, as you can see, that is reflected. And I can actually control the radar from here so I can point it left and right. I can even increase the elevation. Um, and so this is essentially looking straight forward Whereas this is almost God's eye view, uh, you are where my cursor is currently pointing. So right here. Now, another nifty HOTAS spine that you might not have known. Um, down here I have my SA page. 
but by default we are always in the HSI. Now if I press sensor control switch down I can assign my TDC to this screen. Now if I press down again it switches over to the SA page. So this is useful um, because say you want to do some navigation but then you want to see some data link stuff um, it is very very easy to switch over um, and so this can be quite useful and then if you didn't already know this uh, this is definitely covered in some tutorials but you might not have remembered or maybe you just didn't hear about it um, if you have the cursor and you quickly move it out and then in you can change the scale so we're at 160 if I move it out and in 80 40 80 40 20 so this is a very easy way to change the scale and if you're wondering how I got the map on the essay page it's just this key here so now um, I'm gonna show you on the radar yes you can do the same thing so hopefully some of these things uh, that I've talked about will help you in the future um, without knowing this thing uh, the basically brick timeout timer um, I don't think this would be a usable air to airplane um, you would just lose your tracks far too often uh, and it is just not reliable when used like that when used with TWS when having a large number here you will not lose your locks anywhere near as much. I would say it's actually one of the most reliable planes to have a TWS lock with, as long as you do this. Now, I'd like to see this fixed. Um, I'd like to see this more flushed out, but in its current state, as long as you know some of these tricks, um, the Hornet is a very capable air-to-air -air plane. And as you can see, we're no longer getting bricks on this guy. Okay, there are no bricks setting from manual to auto see so I've just kept that TWS lock even though I didn't have radar contact with him for quite a few seconds so if somebody was notching us okay as you can see I will just manually move it over here it's trying to figure out uh, based on his old point like where he was it's trying to guess where he is and then once it goes back yeah we pick him up again so it is quite a reliable system. Um, it is just not implemented very well. And I'd like to see that change, but as long as you know about this, and as long as you remember to do it every time you switch weapons, so I'm in the M9X, it's back to eight. I go back to the M120, I have to remember to set it back. As long as I do that, then you will actually have a good experience with this plane. You just really have to get into it and understand what's going on because it is not finished, um, not even close. Alrighty, so hopefully you learned something. Um, hopefully that was useful to somebody. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you very much.